to the service of our great imperial family, to which we all belong. 一九五二到二零二二，她已是史上在位最长女君主。Because she is the symbol of what people agree about. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister of Canada, for making me feel so old. 九十六岁英女王还会突破更多记录吗？凤凰聚焦，白金王冠，英女王登基七十年正在播出。欢迎收看华润凤凰聚焦，我是任任。刚刚过去的六月二号到五号，英国人民欢度了四天的假期，庆祝伊丽莎白二世女王登基七十周年。在英国，王室家族的地位一度无可替代。从1952年起就在位的女王，更是国家团结的象征。但如今，王室的绝对地位被撼动，保留君主制的支持率比十年前下跌了百分之二十二。更有杂志的封面公然写道：“哀悼君主制。”伊丽莎白二世在位这七十年里，曾经的日不落帝国是如何一步一步的走向衰落的？作为英国史上在位最久的君主，英女王的一生又经历了。怎样的命运转折一九三六年，十岁的伊丽莎白见证了她人生中第一次重大转折。Uncle David Edward the Eighth, he decided he didn't want to be king. He abdicated the throne. It was a moment of great family drama and distress. Um, and the young Elizabeth lived through all of that. 伯父追随爱人而去，徒留下痴情的温莎公爵之名。伊丽莎白的父亲乔治六世即位，伊丽莎白成为王位的推定继承人。To make the world of tomorrow a better and happier place. Blockbuster. 一九三九年，二战爆发，年轻英国公主的声音第一次传遍欧洲。我们知道，当时这个伦敦啊，以及一些大城市都呃在经历着这种轰炸，所以呢，当时大城市里的呃密集的地方的呃孩子都被呃送到了这个乡村去避难啊、呃。那么这个。伊丽莎白公主这首次讲话，就是对象就是孩子。此时的伊丽莎白也只是一名未满二十岁的少女，在战火纷飞的年代，她心中牵挂着的还有她已去参战的表哥，希腊王子菲利普。The very first time, the young Elizabeth, who was a girl still, saw Prince Philip, her cousin. She fell in love with him, and.、Um, She never changed. 1947年，伊丽莎白如愿与菲利普结婚。自此，
菲利普必须严格遵守英国王室礼仪，在一切公众场合向伊丽莎白鞠躬致敬。王室的重量正越来越多地压到伊丽莎白的肩上。And to the service of our great imperial family, to which we all belong. 伊丽莎白的誓言，短短五年后就到了旅行的时刻。The tragic news reached Princess Elizabeth and her husband while in Kenya, and the new queen left immediately for London. Here we see her in 1952, uh, coming down the steps. Of the plane, she was in Africa when she'd heard the news of her father's death, and so here at the bottom we see Winston Churchill, we see the other politicians of the day waiting to greet her. 一夜之间，少女已成女王。The date she came to the throne is the date she lost her beloved father, George VI, who died, so she was mourning. But she was also looking to the future um, and the rain. The new queen in front of her was a once rising but now falling apart country. In 1961, the relationship between the United States and the Soviet Union grew closer and closer. 为阻止加纳完全离开英联邦，伊丽莎白二世决定亲身到访，并与加纳总统恩克鲁马共舞。And so at that time, when the world was still racially divided, the Queen went to Africa, where many of the black colonies of Africa were becoming independent, and she danced with President Nkrumah, the head of Ghana. That was a picture that scandalized. The world, um, the queen, a white woman dancing with a black man. But in 1961, there was one person in Britain who was saying Black Lives Matter, and that was the queen. As England's longest reigning monarch, until 2022, Elizabeth II has conducted 260 foreign visits. When the Queen, uh, when the Queen became the Queen in 1952 or 1953, um, there are only nine countries in the Commonwealth. Over the years, uh, the, the Commonwealth has grown to about 54 countries. Um, so it's not always been 54 countries. People have been naturally absorbed that because, uh, in her in her words, she said, um, the Commonwealth is built on the highest. Quality uh, of the spirit of man and friendship and the desire for peace. happened in 1992 was that Windsor Castle caught fire and burnt down. And for many people, there was a symbolism. This year was also Elizabeth's anniversary of 40 years. On the anniversary of the day, all people were watching this man who was following his old country, if he could still keep his old country. 1992 is not a year on which I shall look back with undiluted pleasure. <clears throat> In the words of one of my more sympathetic correspondents, it has turned out to be an annus horribilis. One of her private secretaries said, you know, this is not, and he used the Latin words, he said, this is not an annus mirabilis. In British history, there, there have been years that have been called annus mirabilis. Um, marvelous years. 
this is an Annus Paribalis. And the Queen made a joke of that. She said, I'm sure you will forgive me saying this is an Annus Paribalis. And everybody laughed. And suddenly, her, the, the disasters of the family were turned into the stuff of ordinary life. 王室的厄运并未终止。一九九七年八月三十日，为躲避狗仔队，戴安娜与男友及保镖驾车时发生严重车祸，最终不治。戴安娜的离世将伊丽莎白二世再次推向民怨的风口浪尖。当时的女王呢，她留在这个，她正在苏格兰的呃夏季行宫里度假，带着孩子们，啊、呃，她不愿意回来。报纸就是天天轰炸他，啊，让他回来，啊，他就走进了这种啊悲痛的人群里，啊，和大家这个看着大家写的那些东西，看着花海，然后呢，向全国和全世界发表的这个电视直播讲话。So what I say to you now, as your queen and as a grandmother, I say from my heart. First, I want to pay tribute to Diana myself. She was an exceptional and gifted human being. In good times and bad, she never lost her capacity to smile and laugh, nor to inspire others with her warmth and kindness. She is very professional. She understands she is doing a job. She also understands that she is part of a system. The, the successful royals. In Britain, are the modest ones who understand that they are players in a team. She may be captain of the team, but she does her duty. Diana 离世后，女王削减王宫的预算，谨守政治中立，王室的声誉逐渐好转。然而，这一切都还没有结束，新的挑战正等待着她去一一化解。欲戴王冠，必承其重。稍微一时，伊丽莎白二世就面临着英国战后国力衰退、大英帝国逐渐解体的难关。但是，继位初期的女王也不会料想到，自己未来的统治生涯会更加的险象迭生。从九十年代的城堡着火开始，到近年的脱欧谈判、新冠疫情、哈里夫妇出走王室，重重冲击之下，九十多高龄的英女王如何应对？下节回来，我们继续。My government will renegotiate the United Kingdom's relationship with the European Union. Alongside this, early legislation will be introduced to provide for an in-out referendum on membership of the European Union before the end of 2017. 2015, when Cameron led the Conservative Party to the stage, the 89-year-old queen gave a speech in the House of Commons, and the Conservative Party took over the new government. 英国脱欧公投也拉开序幕。This could be, for the first time in history, a recession brought on ourselves. We would no longer be subject to what is effectively a job-destroying machine. 留欧派与脱欧派唇枪舌战，英国民众对两派的支持率也都有四成。在这个敏感时刻，社会各界都期待一向严守政治中立的女王表明她的立场。据英国王室历史学家罗伯特透露，女王曾在私人晚宴上询问宾客：“给我三个理由，为何英国应该留欧。”这被脱欧派解读为：“女王支持脱欧。” oh. <笑>英国畅销小报《太阳报》称：“女王支持脱欧”，瞬时引发热议。但王室立即出面否认，强调女王一直保持中立。最终，这条爆炸性新闻被英国媒体监管机构裁定为
严重误报。Her Prime Minister at the time, David Cameron, said the Queen purred like a cat with pleasure down the phone at the news that Scotland had voted to stay in the United Kingdom. Those are clues to what she thinks. When it comes to Brexit, there are people who say that、um, she actually felt that Britain had a useful role to play in Europe. 深陷脱欧困局的英国，历经三任首相更迭，最终完成脱欧。女王虽从未明确表达自己的态度，但她却一如既往从容面对脱欧引起的各种问题，履行作为国家元首的职责。My government's priority is to deliver the United Kingdom's departure from the European Union on the 31st of January. 2020年，新冠疫情席卷全球，首相约翰逊也染疫住院。危急时刻，伊丽莎白二世发表了其在位六十八年间第四次危机时刻演讲，激励国民团结一致，对抗疫情。Together we are tackling this disease, and I want to reassure you that if we remain united and resolute, then we will overcome it. 疫情期间，伊丽莎白二世取消了生日庆祝活动，九十四岁生日悄然度过。二零二零年一月，哈里王子夫妇宣布退出英国王室，不再履行王室成员义务。二人随后移居美国加州。And I know I haven't always gone it right, but as far as this goes, there really was no other option. We don't, we really don't mind them having the freedom, or going to have a, a their own life. You know, it's, it's a, what you call an ordinary life. We don't mind it. What we don't like is Queen not being informed about nothing. I think it's no secret that Prince Harry、um, left the working royal family because,、um, under the influence of Meghan Markle,、uh, he came to feel that he was not valued. Meghan. Was used to being a diva in Hollywood, having whatever she wanted, and she suddenly discovered, actually, she's not more important than her sister-in-law. There is the heir, there is the spare, and the heir is more important than the spare, and the heir's wife is more important than the spare's wife, and Meghan didn't want to be a spare's wife, and Harry wasn't happy to be a spare, and so they went, and this was their free decision. 三个月前，二零一九年十一月，女王最爱的次子安德鲁王子被卷入性侵丑闻，并宣布停止履行王室义务。He knows exactly what he's done, and、um, I hope he comes clean about it. My opinion, my immediate thought was shame. I think he'd face it, but I don't think it's going to last long. 最终，安德鲁王子性侵案以庭外和解告终。王室成员分崩离析，王室荣誉再次折损。九十高龄的英女王内心又经历了怎样的波折 ？The Queen made her feelings about Prince Andrew very clear at the、um, memorial service for her husband, his father, Prince Philip. She chose Andrew to lead her and support her into the church. For the ceremony, she went to Andrew, who held his elbow. This reflects the fact the Queen is a loyal mother. The Queen's attitude, and she has never discussed this, but most people interpreted her actions as saying, "This is my son."
菲利普亲王离世后，因不满脱欧而发生暴乱的北爱尔兰，难得的恢复了平静，以表示对菲利普亲王的怀念与尊重。The passing of, of Prince Philip affected the Queen very deeply, but she is a religious character. She is a Christian. She believes that、um, when she dies, she will go to heaven, and she will meet with Philip. There was one moment that we were not allowed to see on television. That was when Prince Philip's coffin was lowered below the floor. Of the chapel, not to be buried, but to wait for her. Philip 亲王葬礼的四天后，就是伊丽莎白二世的九十五岁生辰。外界早前揣测，女王也许会在菲利普亲王去世后宣布退位。I think it is very safe to say that the Queen will never abdicate.、Um, for her, the abdication crisis of 1936 was a terrible family trauma. It thrust all the weight and responsibility of monarchy on the shoulders of her shy, nervous father, and the trauma that he went through um, when um, abdication happened. So, for the Queen, abdication is a dirty word. It's a swear word. It's an unacceptable idea. Now. It's not all roses, I must say, because only 75% of the British population, let's say, encourage the monarchy.、Uh, 70% want a republic, which is fine.、Uh, 8% go either way, which, whichever, whichever they choose on the day. So there is now an idea which is being put around that when, when she dies and Charles comes, they will have a smaller monarchy. That is, a lot of the other members of the royal family will be got out of the way. And the reason for that is because that, this is to discourage anti-monarchical. Sentiments and to maintain the monarchy in existence. 二零二一年圣诞节，英国疫情稍有缓和。伊丽莎白二世再次通过电视向英国民众发表圣诞文告。媒体留意到，她胸前佩戴的是度蜜月期间所戴的蓝宝石胸针。Although it's a time of great happiness and good cheer for many. Christmas can be hard for those who have lost loved ones. This year, especially, I understand why. 今年二月六日，伊丽莎白二世成为英国史上第一位庆祝白金禧的君主。二月二十一日，英国宣布与病毒共存政策，并陆续解除防疫限制。几乎同一时间，九十五岁的英女王确诊新冠。I'm sorry to hear that. I think it's sad, but she'll get over it. She's that kind of a woman. We hope. She's just she's an icon. She's an icon of the UK. She's an epitome of the UK in some way.、Uh, anything happening to her that's to her detriment is, you know, to the detriment of the country. 染疫两个月后，伊丽莎白二世宣布恢复健康，并以视频方式为皇家伦敦医院的重症监护室揭幕。She sees herself as serving us. And having a job to do, and I think that's a fundamental reason for her success and the affection people feel for her. The Queen has not changed at all in the last 70 years. She is still governed by her sense of duty, her sense of service. In interesting ways, though,、um, she has learned to do her job better. 为庆祝英女王登基七十周年，各种庆祝活动在英国各地陆续拉开帷幕。伊丽莎白二世那标志性的色彩身影再次活跃在英国民众的视野中。与此同时，伊丽莎白二世的长子、威尔士亲王查尔斯也在默默迎来自己的新纪录。他将英国史上皇储等待继承王位的时间第一次突破到了七十年以上。虽然贵为英联邦君主，但是伊丽莎白女王的手上并没有实权，她也一直保持着中立的政治态度。也许这也是赢得当今英国民众信任和拥护的原因之一。英国议会至今也没有一人投票废除君主制。可是
，英女王毕竟年事已高，王储也七十有四了。不久将来的大英帝国，君主立宪制度还会有稳定的未来吗？又会面临着什么样的挑战？感谢收看《凤凰聚焦》，我是任震，下期再会。